What's going on guys? Today we are talking about LJ Collier in year two and what we should expect from the rookie who didn't have exactly the year one that a lot of us projected. As always, like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about LJ Collier and the type of impact that he can have in year two. So what we're going to talk about in today's video, we're going to start with the top. I'm going to talk about the ceiling, the floor, and what I expect to happen and what would be considered a good year for LJ Collier because I think those coincide. I think he has a good year and I think he starts to relieve a bit of the stress that's been put on him based on his year one performance. Of course, year one, he got injured in training camp. He hurt his ankle extremely badly. And because of that, he missed the start of the season. That was the prime time for rookies in training camp is when they figure out how to operate in the NFL, how to function, how to treat their body, how to operate in the trenches. It's a whole new ball game. And so getting thrown into the fire, tossed into the lines then, if you will, the way that he was later on in the season, it caused him to be stunted in his growth. And I just agree with anyone that says year one was because of anything other than that injury. He only had three tackles on the year, played in 11 games, started none of them. So I put it solely based on that injury and based on the situation that he was thrust into last year. Now he has an opportunity to prove me right, however. He's came out lately and said that he's looking forward to having a bounce back year in year two. He thanks the fact that the fans still believe in him. He thanks the fact that the coaches still believe in him. The team still believes in him. And he wants to prove us all right because of it. His last year at TCU, he had 42 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, and six sacks. I think that's way better statistics than he's going to have in the NFL, but I think we can expect this year that he's going to improve from last season. It's not hard to have more than two solo tackles like he did last year, three total tackles. I think this year he has about 20 tackles. I think he has about two to three sacks, and I think that is a major step up for him, and we will take that on the progression forward with LJ Collier, because I think we are also going to use him as a reserve because because our right end situation is going to be either Everson Griffin or Jadavion Clowney. I think LJ Collier backs him up, and whenever he gets snaps, he's going to have an opportunity to impact Seattle defensively. And I think he's going to be able to take advantage of that more this year than last. He has a low center of gravity. He has a wide base, so he plays with good leverage, and he has very explosive hips. He's going to play between the five and the eight technique, which is head up on the tackle and head up on the tight end. So he's going to be somewhere in there, and he's going to have an opportunity to help in the run game as well as pass rush. I don't think he has what I believe his ceiling is going to be this year. I think his ceiling would be about five sacks and about 35 tackles. I don't think he gets there. I think that would be the most tremendous year realistically that he could have at this point in his career. And I feel like his floor, unfortunately, with him being out of the league cut because he does something stupid off the field or he does something that violates his contract. So I think his floor, once again, he gets cut after the season because he hasn't produced on the field and he does something dumb off the field. Realistically, I think he's going to get 20 tackles and two to three sacks. But the ceiling ceiling for me this year would be 35 tackles and five sacks for LJ Collier. And don't forget how important it is for Seattle to get this pick right because of the fact that we've had the Malik McDowell's of the world with the ATV incident. And back in 2016, Jermaine Fetty, while he did play a lot of meaningful snaps for us, he was getting beat off the edge. He almost got Russell Wilson hurt a couple of times and he constantly had penalties. While there's never a good time to have a penalty, he always seemed to find a bad time to have one. It was unacceptable out of a first round pick. Rashad Penny got injured last year. Seattle's been struggling with first round picks lately. It'd be nice if LJ Collier were to work out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Let me know what you guys think of the comment section below. If LJ Collier in year two, how is he going to perform? Is he going to do better than year one? Will he become a bust for Seattle? As always, go Hawks.